Oh, here's one of those uh, dope moments. Um, this is the outlaw caliper, okay, and I took the dimensions for what I needed for the bracket, okay, off their site. I didn't actually model the bracket, okay, that'll teach me. I should have. <laughs> I should have at least compared, you know, my wood model to it. So as I started trying to line up the, uh, the holes, you know, I noticed that uh, I wasn't quite uh, getting uh, what I wanted there. Well, as it turns out, you can see these pieces right here, it's sitting on top of those. So then, the you know, I, I could just, you know, do a little grind, a little cut, uh, I, you know, something obnoxious. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and see if I can't reshape the wood one to get the clearance. I've run two bandsaw cuts down in there. Yeah, you can see it there. Uh, there's another one over on the other side there. Anyway, I'm going to try to... Uh, I'm going to run the end mill in. I haven't milled wood before. I've done foam, plat foam, but... Uh, <laughs> so I've got it clamped in there. I didn't want to clamp it in too hard because I don't want to create big, huge divots in the, in the end where the... Uh, uh, in case I decide to use this again. But I decided to modify the wood piece first. I can figure out the depth in that stuff. So uh, uh, I don't want to mess up one of the aluminum ones or have to put the aluminum one in here more than once. So... Uh, once I get an idea how much clearance I need, I may modify it in CAD and then uh, get some better measurements and stuff. And uh, we'll go from there and see how I uh, actually do it. But let's uh, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, shave some wood off of here. Okay, I was trying to be real careful in here because I didn't want to cut a divot in that way and have it, you know, become an undercut. A little divot. We'll straighten that up just a little bit. Take some of the uh, splinters off and uh, go from there. Oh yeah, there's, there's plenty of clearance at those points. Uh, even when I go all the way down. So I kind of like that. We'll uh, we'll see how that works. I, this is prototyping, so you know. You gotta be, uh, you try to factor everything in and get it right the first time, but if not, well, you know, you get to do it again. So we'll see what happens. I really don't have to worry about having it bolted down out here because all of the work's gonna be in the front corner here, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna shoot for just taking that off with the router. Um, man, that means making a big mess again, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully it'll stay together this time. Really nice to figure out how to make that uh, lock tire because that's the whole body moving. Hmm. Okay, well, in order to keep that thing from shifting around yeah it's pretty hokey and everything and uh, 
But basically, I put a ratcheting strap down here, pulling all the play out. So that's nice and rigid now. So let's try it again and uh, see if maybe we have a little better luck with it not uh, wandering all over. And in case you're curious, uh, the camera's whew, probably at least seven feet from the point it's focused on. Okay, now to mount it up to the other, uh, switch them around so I can cut the other one. So in order to make this work, I think you can... Uh, I've got a piece of sacrificial aluminum under there, about a quarter inch tall, to keep the, you know, the bolt heads from uh, riding on the table. Okay, because the one that I just cut is the one on top, and that's the one with the threads. So the only way to hold the two together was uh, to do it inverted like this. Now you may notice that the uh, the actual cutting area, the bearing will hit the top pattern, but the cutting area won't cut all the way. I, I need to raise the bit up, basically, so uh, I'm going to do that next. came out beautiful. Basically what I did was I had touched up this on the sander and got the uh, first one I cut cleaned up a little bit so rather than transfer any of the bumps and wows from the wood to the, you know, that got cut into the first piece, I didn't transfer that to the second piece because I cleaned the first piece up. And having a steel or aluminum template um, to make these from would, would make it really, really sweet. So. Uh, switch bits to the uh, chamfer bit and uh, chamfer the plates. That's still pretty big compared to uh, what I want. came out pretty nice. Uh, I like that chamfer. It looks pretty close to the other. I'm going to run it on the main piece here and see how it looks. I like where that's set. It's a hair deeper than the other one, but uh, that's fine. It'll make sure they blend in together and stuff. So do the second plate here. I don't have to do the inside. Uh, you know, there's no breaks in it. it doesn't matter if it matches perfectly. So uh, I'm not going to recut the center hole. So you can see it there, I put the bolts in there. They're centered in the in the bottom of the holes, but they're in the bottom of the holes. Okay. So then if I turn it around here, you can see I've got clearance on both sides there. And the reality is, is you know, this is gonna be up so those bolts would be in the middle. Okay. So that ought to work beautifully. Now I can finally get back to drilling and tapping the holes there.
Okay, I like that too. So let's call that one 71. Okay, let's uh, do some drilling. I'm going to use a small one to take most of the meat out, a smaller one, and then I'm going to, just to help make sure it stays uh, uh, as clean as possible and not wander and stuff like that, I'll, uh, then I'll use the final drill bit. Now, for the M14, it calls for half inch. I'm using a size smaller, which is really only about 8,000 smaller, something like that. Uh, so it may make it kind of tight for the tap. Uh, but it's a high-speed steel tap. It's brand new. Um, I'm going to hand tap it just because I, I only have four of them. It's not worth trying to set up. So, ready to do the tap. So, We'll put it up in there. Now there's a, there's a dimple on the back side there of the tap that uh, rides in there. So and you know if it gets if it's if it's too hard and I just can't uh, get the tap in there, then. Uh, I'll drill it with a half inch. Because even though it's only eight thousandths, uh, eight thousandths is quite a bit when you're trying to uh, drill the hole and tap it at the same time because the pilot hole is not big enough. Yeah, there's no way the uh, tap head, clutch on the tap head wouldn't have. I don't think it would have handled this much torque. So, it's getting there. Okay, obviously more than enough. There we go, nice, huh? Now when I'm using the the tap holder there, the alignment uh, pin there, you hear it click, it's because I'm all the way out. I, I like to use it when I come back out as well, because uh, when you come back out it's really easy to get off, and especially in aluminum, you'll cut the threads right back out of there uh, on the back stroke, because it's almost as sharp on the back side as it is on the front side. So, let's go over to the other hole. Ah, I'm supposed to chamfer these first. I'll tell you what, I sure do like that keyless chuck. It's not perfect. It doesn't bite extremely hard every time, but uh, boy, it sure spins nice. Okay, I'm still on zero. Let's... Uh... The... The point of the countersinking is, is when the inserts go in, it's uh, supposed to be to help register the depth of the, uh, of the insert, so. And you back it up to cut the, break the chip off. If I drilled it to half an inch, I probably wouldn't have to. It would probably go in well enough, because uh, this is a spiral point. Uh, tap so it pushes the chips down through the bottom of the hole and uh, there's really no need to back it up when it's going so I think it's just because I have the hole so tight ah that's a little better alright just for grins and giggles here before I um, do the other plate. I thought, you know, let me double check, or let me check that uh, this lines up perfectly. So it doesn't really matter which way I put this on here. Uh, 
that adapts it from, uh, it's a 14 by 1.5 uh, hole in the aluminum, threaded hole in the aluminum, and then it's a 10 by 1.25 in the, and, 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 oh man, see how that went in there? Well, the insert's starting to thread out the backside there, but, uh, oh man, beautiful. There was no twisting, no binding. I got my clearance I want. Perfect. So uh, I'll drill the other one, and if the other one comes out this nice, uh, the uh, we'll move on to inserting the uh, installing the inserts, and uh, the brackets will be done. Well, we'll take a couple shots of the uh, inserts going in. So here's the inserts I'm using. Uh, bought them through. Uh, yeah, they're Acme's. See those online a lot. You can look up other videos on how to put these things in, and they'll uh, uh, probably do a better job uh, explaining it. Since uh, it's been a long, long time since I put these things in before. Uh, so I do want to, at this point, mirror them, okay? Because there is. You want it 10 to 20 thousandths below the surface here. Uh, so that would be, you know, just about perfect right there. But I got a little sticking out. I don't want the end with the tabs sticking out. I want those things engaged as far as possible. Uh, so I want to mirror them because when it bolts onto the back of the caliper, I want this side. I want the side that's recessed slightly up against the caliper. Okay. All right, I ran the tap down through each... Uh, hole again and blew them out good so uh, they all started no problem so all right well I just measured that one and it's down about 28 thousandths uh, so that's perfect you can see though I've got a uh, bit hanging out here let's uh, All right, so that's how far down it is. And this is half inch plate, and that's how much sticking out the backside. I'm not too worried about that. I just need to make sure that they're uh, down in the front there. The nice thing about these inserts is, too, if you look online, I'm not going to take any out just for demonstrations, but uh, uh, if you look online, it will show you how to uh, remove them. Well, this has been a little uh, uh, challenging. I've got it in there. I needed to get all the way through. I've already run the tap through, um, so I'm not exactly sure why it's getting so hung up toward the bottom. Well, I guess I do have a couple burrs in there. So anyway, what I found was there's. I don't want to bend the the tabs off, break them off or anything. So I can't really, you know, just keep twisting on them because that puts the load all at the top. So what I've been doing is taking this plate here and holding it straight up and down and, and pushing it in firmly. So basically what it's doing is it's putting the load right at the bottom of each of the uh, pieces that's sticking up. Oh, but you can still see that uh, it's going to have a tendency to want to bend them. Well, let's see. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay. Had I drilled it to the half inch... that they said that would clearance the inside the peak so what's happening here is the peak inside might even be able to see it on this one yeah see that mark across the the pin my tolerance is so tight that pin is not the same depth as the deepest part of the the thread there. So I'm actually scraping on the pin when I get to that point. Yeah, and you can see the marks, you can see the aluminum taking off, stuff like that. So if I want that to go in easy, I need to uh, basically run the half inch through it. Uh, 
Yeah, or fight with it. Uh, and r realistically, I really only need to run the. I really only need to put the half inch, you know, down about an eighth of an inch. I just need it in there enough to clearance the uh, uh, the pins. So I think I want to do that, so I don't have to fight with it so hard. Let's try it. Well, I'm glad uh, you you could see the difference in the depth there. Okay, uh, I'm glad I didn't drill all the way through, and I'm glad I didn't do it on the other ones. Uh, I may have to go see about buying a metric cap if I have to do many more of these, but uh, or a metric uh, drill a uh, bit. That's more like it. Okay, let's measure this one and see. Pretty close to 30, a little over. I'm going to back that up just a hair. Alright, just under 30. Okay, so the pin goes in, centers it, and there's a lip here that, you know, will push down on the four pins. This collar goes over to keep the pins from splaying out. So you're supposed to be able to just put it on there and give it a few uh, light taps to seat it. And I'm assuming that uh, when it bottoms out, we'll hear the difference. So. Well, they're going down in. All right, looks like they're flush. Cool. They, they don't stick out at all. So, now something, one person, uh, one YouTube video I watched, he uses a center punch and runs them down a little extra. Well, one of them it pushed in, the other it didn't. So I think actually what I would need is something with a bit more of a blunt tip. Uh, I'll, try, I'll try that one next time. Because... Uh, okay, well, so... Yeah, there's no wiggle or anything in that uh, insert. That's nice. Okay, this down flush. Yeah, the, the blunt tip definitely helps, and I like that the recess just a hair more. Awesome. Okay, gotta see, gotta see. One bolt. It should fit like it did a minute ago when I was just testing it. Okay, now I'm breaking it just back off a little bit of snug there so that we can see. Nice. I like that fit. No complaints whatsoever. So, oh, I've got, I've got two different, two different lengths of M10s. Is that what I did? 
Yep, I bought 30s and 35s. So the 35 looks like it's going to be a little long. If the bushing, if the insert sticks out a little too far, it might hit the rotor. And if that's the case, then you'll have to grind it down with a with a right angle grinder or whatever to get it uh, flush. Or put it in the mill and mill it off a little bit. Uh, that's the shortest insert McMaster car had. I might be able to find, you know, a different one somewhere else, but, uh, uh, you know, it, that's perfect. The 30 millimeters, which is what I wanted and measured originally, I bought 35s just because, uh, if I put a uh, lock washer on. In fact, let's try that. I'm not sure that you want to put a lock washer on an aluminum caliper, so... I think you'd probably just want to go with the... Yeah, it's still going to be too long when it clamps down. So maybe if it had a flat washer... Um, so, I don't know. Input. Maybe Dave... Uh, Dave's getting them. He'll have some input for how he normally sets them up. So perfect. So even if this gets milled or ground down flat with the plate, uh, the screw is the bolt is still just shy of that, uh, so it's got more than it's got at least three eighths of an inch of thread engagement. So it, it just depends on when it gets set up with the rotor. So uh, I won't know that until the rotor adapter is done, which I'm not sure if I'm going to start tomorrow or not. Awesome, love it. I have clearance down in here on both sides, sixteenth of an inch or so. That ought to be uh, plenty. So now I'm getting kind of anxious to make the other part, the rotor adapter, so that I can put it all together, mocked up, and uh, see uh, see if I got all the offsets correct and everything. But that's certainly it for today. I'm not going to glass bead these until toward the end because all the mock up I still got to do and everything. So yeah, that's it.